Hey guys, welcome back to the OpenTK Platformer tutorial series. My name is Sil, and in this part we're going to be setting up our player class. If my voice sounds a little bit weird today, it's probably because I'm sick, so bear with me on that. Now before we get things started, I do want to change one thing real fast. If you noticed in our last episode, the ladders didn't have transparency. As you can see, they just have a white background. And that's because we haven't told OpenGL that it needs to render that transparency. It's really quick and easy. All we need to do is add two lines of code here. If we go back to our game.cs and in the initialize function here, we add gl.enable, and we'll do enable cap.blend. And then we also do gl.blend func. And for the factor source, we'll do blending factor source dot source alpha. And for the blending factor destination, we'll do that dot one minus source alpha. And then if we go ahead and run this here, you'll see that our ladders have transparency, which is great. Now we can get cracking with our player class, so if you want to add that class here real fast. Perfect. And then we want to be using OpenTK as well as system.drawing and using OpenTK.input. The first thing we want to do is add two public vector twos, and this will be called position and velocity, and then a private vector two and we'll call this size. Now the position vector 2 is going to correspond to the center of our player. The size is going to correspond to how big the player is. And obviously the velocity is going to correspond to how fast he's moving. We also need to add a private texture 2D variable. And this will hold our player sprite, so we're going to call it player sprite. And then we're going to add a few private bools for later on. We won't be using it in this episode most likely since we won't be working on the movement too much. But those bools are going to be climbing, facing right, on ladder, and grounded. And these will make a little bit more sense later, so we'll just leave it with that for now. And then I also want to make a public rectangle. And we'll make it a rectangle F, and we're going to call this call rec. And this is going to be just a git accessor here. Now this is going to represent the rectangle that collides with the geometry in the level. So as I said, the position should be in the center, and the size will correspond to how large it is. So what we need to do is we're going to return new rectangle F. And for the x value, we're going to do position.x minus size.x divided by 2f. And do about the same thing for the y, so position.y minus size.y divided by 2f. And then for the width, it'll be off of the c size.x and size.y. And there you are. And one thing I also want to add real fast is I want to decouple the drawing position from the co collision rectangle. That way if our sprite needs to be scaled a little bit different than our actual collision rectangle, we can do that. So we'll actually make another public accessor here. Do another rectangle F and we'll do draw rec. And it's going to be dependent on our call rec just a bit, but we will be able to offset it a bit or scale a little bit differently if we want to. So what we're going to do is we're going to do rectangle F call rec equals capital call rec. There's just a temporary variable here. And a draw rectangle needs to be 10 pixels wider than a call rectangle because that's the aspect ratio of our player sprite. So that means we need to offset it to the left by 5 pixels and then increase the width by 10. So we'll do call rec dot x equals call rec dot x minus 5. And we'll do call rec dot width equals call rec dot width plus 10. And then we will return our temporary variable here, call rec. And that should be good to go. If you need to change the size for a different sprite, you can do that as well. So now we're going to set up our player constructor here. So we're going to do public player. And we need a vector2 start position. So we're going to do this dot position equals start position. We'll do this dot velocity equals vector2 dot zero. We want to make sure we initialize all our flags here. So we're going to do climb equals false. Facing right equals true. On ladder equals false. Grounded equals false. Also want to make sure we initialize a size here. So we're going to do this dot size equals new vector2. And we'll put in a default value here. If you want the player to be a different size, you can change the value that we put in here. But for now, I'm going to put 20 by 40. We also need to load in the sprite sheet. And that means that we need to add it to our content folder first. So go ahead and download it from the link in the description. And then add it to your content folder here like we've done before. And again, don't forget to set the properties on it. I always remind you of that because I always seem to forget. And then we need to load it in here. So we're going to do this dot player sprite equals content pipe dot load texture. And mine is called player sheet.png. And that should be about it for our initializer. So now we need to set up the framework of the rest of our class here real fast. We're going to need a public void update function. We're also going to put in a public void handle input function, which we'll go ahead and call at the beginning of update. I just like to separate these two so I can uh, read them a lot easier. Obviously, handle input will get the keyboard input and change variables accordingly. Update will update the position and uh, do collision and that kind of stuff. We also need a public void draw function. 
and this will of course draw the player. Also I suppose we'll add this here as well, we'll do a public void resolve collision function. So we're going to go ahead and fill in our update function here with a couple of things. First off we're going to add the gravity to the velocity, so we'll do this.velocity plus equals new vector2. And We don't want any gravity on the x-axis, but for the y-axis we're going to do about like 0.5f. You can change this and make it feel right for whatever type of platform you're making. And the gravity value is quite important for how the platform is going to feel. Anyways, once we've got the velocity, we're going to do this dot position plus equals velocity. So after we move the position of the player according to the velocity, we need to resolve collisions. And this resolve collisions function is very important since it basically is the backbone of our platformer. What it's going to do is make sure that the player is pushed out of any type of blocks that he was just moved into, as well as a couple other things like keeping track of whether we're on the ground or not. And since it's going to be such a large function, I think I'm just going to save it for the next tutorial. So for now, we're just going to fill in the draw function so that we can see the player. Now, if you look at the player sheet that PNG I just had you download, you can see that there's two different player sprites in here. One of them's for climbing, one of them's just for standing. So we do need to draw a specific rectangle of the player sprite rather than the whole thing. So what we'll do here, we'll do if climbing, else, and we'll draw a different sprite depending on whether he's climbing or not. So we'll do sprite batch dot draw, and we'll pass it the player sprite. For the position, we'll do this dot position. For the scale, we'll do new vector two, and we'll do draw rec dot width divided by player sprite dot width. And we'll divide that by two since there's two sprites in our player sprite. And we'll do about the same thing for the draw rec height divided by player sprite dot height. Except for we won't divide it by two since there's only one sprite in the y direction. For the color, we'll do color dot white. For the origin, we'll do new vector two. And we'll do player sprite dot width divided by four f. And then we're going to do player sprite dot height divided by two f. And then for the source rec, we're going to do new rectangle f. For the x value, we're going to want to do player sprite dot width divided by two f. For the y value, we'll do zero. For the width, we'll do player sprite dot width divided by two f again. And the height, we'll just do player sprite dot height. I'm gonna go ahead and clean this up just a little bit. There you go, now you can see it a little bit better. And it looks like I actually mistyped one thing here real fast. The player sprite dot width here, we need to actually get rid of the two f here. Because the scale is actually dependent on the source rectangle width and not the actual player sprite width in our sprite batch dot draw function. Just a little bit of technicality. So we're gonna go ahead and copy this here and put it in our else statement. And actually the only thing we need to change here is the rectangle uh, f x value here. We're just going to set it to zero and get the first uh, top left most rectangle or cell. I'm going to do one more thing here. Um, instead of 20 by 40, we're actually going to make our player 40 by 40 up in our player constructor for the size variable. And then we should be good to go on our player class. So we're going to go ahead and jump back over to our game.cs and we're going to go ahead and implement this here. So after defining our level variable, we're going to make a new variable player. I'm just going to call it player lowercase. And then in our onload function, after we initialize our level, we're going to do player equals new player. And for the start pose, we're going to do new vector2. And we're going to want to set the player position to the middle of the grid space that was loaded in with the level. And if you remember, we stored that under the level dot player start pose. So we'll do level dot player start pose dot x. And we're going to multiply it by grid size. And since we want to do it in the center of that grid, we're actually going to add 0 0.5 before we multiply it. Since this is an integer here, it would always be some number and a half, and that way we get it halfway into the grid space. And we'll do about the same thing for the y value here. And just clean it up a bit so you can see it a little bit better. And then we're going to want to go to our onUpdateFrame function. We're going to do player.update, even though that doesn't do too much right now. And we're also going to go ahead and add in the view tracking. So we're going to do view.setPosition and we're going to set it to the player dot position. And for the tween type, we're going to do tween type dot quartic out. And for the number of steps, uh, 60 should be about good for now. And then we also want to make sure that we draw our player. So we're going to go down to our on render frame function here, and we're going to go ahead and put it before the for statement here. We'll do player dot draw, and then we should be good to go. So if we go ahead and run this here, you'll see that our player actually just kind of drops off the screen there real fast. Um, that's because he has gravity at the moment, but he doesn't have any collision with the geometry. So he just constantly accelerates to the point where he accelerates off the screen. So if we want to see if he's drawing correctly real fast, we can just go back to the player.cs uh, and go to the update frame function. And we could just comment out this line here so that he doesn't have any gravity at the moment. And now if we test it, you'll see that we got our player loaded and it looks like he's in the correct position too. So that's about it for this tutorial. In the next one, we're going to be looking into how to get the player to collide with the level geometry. And that's going to involve a little bit more complex math than we've been using so far. It's also kind of the main part of the tutorial that I've been working up to. If you've been following these tutorials as they come out, this tutorial has been a long time coming. 
and that's because I had some technical and physical difficulties with my equipment, so hopefully that doesn't happen with this next part. I apologize for the lay, I'll try to get these out a little bit faster, and I hope to see you guys there. Bye!